Hello and welcome to Let's Talk Money with Natasha, where we're here to educate you how to earn, save and make money. Today I have a very special guest with me, Jay Bridgepaul from Remax. Jay, welcome. Thank you. Um, we, Jay is actually a real estate broker and he's been a real estate broker for well over 25 years, is that correct? Uh, yes. Awesome. And he specializes in the Ontario market and he's very well known, I must say, in the Indo-Canadian Caribbean community and I'm very excited to have you here. It's a real pleasure. So Jay, you know, um, I really wanted you here today on the show to educate um, our viewers a little bit about real estate and what they actually need to know in respect when buying and even selling a home and also a little bit of investments. So, we're going to make it very fun here today. Sounds good? Sounds good. Awesome. So, Jay, why don't you tell me a little bit about, you know, your real estate expertise and what you bring to the table to our community? Well, uh, being a realtor for over 25 years, I've seen a lot of things. I've seen the good, the bad, the ugly, the 13% interest rate and the 2% interest mm -hmm. rate. So it's a, a variety of things and I've seen things change. In the earlier days, it says real estate would have gone through a seven to eight year cycle where the price goes up and come down. But since 1995, you've seen a constant boom in real estate. It keep on going up and up and up and up. And what happened? Is it a bubble? Would it burst? No, it's not a bubble. It's that the amount of immigra immigration coming into GTA is causing a huge shortfall of real estate. Supply is very low. Demand is very high, and that's why the prices continue going up. Oh, awesome! That's very knowledgeable. Let me ask you this: um, I want to. I'm a first-time home buyer, mm -hmm. um, and I want to buy a home in the GTA. What are some of the key things that you would suggest in, in terms of uh, resale versus, let's say, new build? Resale versus new build. If you want to buy in the GTA, you got to understand that uh, as a first-time buyer, your funds might be limited. So the first thing to do is get to the bank, make sure you know how much you're qualified to, maybe someone could come like to you, mm -hmm. and uh, get an idea how much they can afford to buy. Based on knowing how much you can afford to buy, mm -hmm. then you can look where you can buy. Okay. Now, buying new versus buying resale is a different category altogether. Why well, don't you just give, you us see, the, give the viewers see, some pros and cons? Yeah, you see, buy, buying new is brand new. You can actually see everything is new. Everyone loves nice new things. That's however, for sure. <laughs> however, with the new uh, homes, you got to be careful. There are a lot of hidden expenses. For example, you got to pay tarian warranty, education lot levy, grading fee, tree planting, and the list goes on and on. Now, what's happening in the newer home industry as well is that the builders are deliberately only releasing a certain amount of properties. Let's say they got 300 properties for sale, they'll release only 50 and said, hey, come, if you can get a ticket, you win a lottery here. So everyone is jumping up and up and the price keep on going so up. So is that like where I would walk, where I would drive yeah. by and I will see phase one, phase two? Definitely. That's oh, a, they're, okay. they're all good time. You can go and buy. They give everything. Now they're limited in, in phases so that they can make more money. It That's might be very costly. Also a brand new home. When you move into it, there is no fence. They give you one coat of asphalt. You've got to pay for an additional coat if you want. There's no blinds. There's no landscaping. It costs a lot of money. I advise first time buyer, probably within your budget, buy a resale home, it will be better for you. That's that's actually good to know that. Thanks, Jay. So if we're buying a resale home, if I'm a first time home buyer and I have limited access to like down payment, right, you're, you're gearing towards a resale opportunity. And, and what are some of, of the pros when you're buying a resale home? When you're buying a resale home, number one, um, Chances are the owner have done a lot of work already in it. Mm -hmm. You can literally choose your location. With new homes, you got to go where they are. But in a resale home, you can really choose your location where you want to live because there are many in that community. The other thing about a resale home, you will be able to literally see what the rooms look like, the size and everything else. You know the neighborhood, you know the schools mm -hmm. and everything. So that's very important for the family. So if if Let's just say there's a, there's a home buyer out there and they're first time home buyers and, and their down payment is limited and, and, and they want a dream home. But in GTA, it's getting very, you know, very, very <laughs> difficult. I mean, what's the average home price now? 
The average home price is set in, in the 416, it hits almost a million dollar now. So. Oh my gosh. So I, what's, what would be your, your thoughts on a first time home buying buyer buying a home with a finished basement for additional income? What, 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 what would you say about that? It's, uh, it's good and it's bad. It's a dangerous area. Number okay. one, if the basement is not legalized, mm -hmm. then don't take the chance because if something happened, the insurance will not cover that. I had a, a situation with one of my clients that called me and they said five years they were renting the basement, the guy slipped and fall in the driveway, decided to sue them for half a million dollar. They call the insurance company, insurance says, what, you're renting your basement? I will not cover you. Mm -hmm. Eventually, he had to find another insurance company that cost him about four times more the cost of insurance have gone up. Mm -hmm. And he had to settle out of court for $150,000 to that tenant that was in the basement. Wow. So make sure it's legalized if you're renting it. Okay. Um, that's really good to know. In, let's go back a little bit about resale right now. Like Toronto house prices are really, really high, the average. Is there any other amazing, uh, you know, suburbs that you would like, you know, Canadians to focus on? Uh, yes, definitely. Real estate works like this. It's like a waterfall. It flow from a higher area to lower areas. So you have to look where the price is slightly lower. For example, mm. Oshawa is lower than Whitby. You'll find that Whitby, uh, Oshawa will be a good place to invest. The price will start to go up. Okay, I'll, st I'll stop you right there. We'll continue the conversation in terms of key other areas outside of the GTA that you can look at as viewers to become homeowners or even a resale. Mm -hmm. um, stay tuned and we'll be right back. Say hi to Raj and Leah, Luke and Megan. Raj and Leah are busy parents. And, well, so are Luke and Megan. Last week, these two families got a mortgage renewal letter from their bank. Luke and Megan simply signed back the bank's renewal letter. They didn't realize the rates offer were not the best available. Raj and Leah thought the bank's rate was high and wanted a second opinion. So they went to see their friendly neighborhood mortgage intelligence broker. Their broker explained that many homeowners sleepwalk through their mortgage renewal and take what's offered, even though it's free to switch for a better rate, term, or mortgage feature. Out of the dozens of lenders and hundreds of options, their broker found a mortgage with a great rate and great features, like ways to pay it off faster and with much lower penalties if they need to get out of their mortgage early. Raj and Leah learned that mortgage renewal is a great opportunity to save money. Luke and Megan are now sadly paying more for their mortgage. Don't sleepwalk through your mortgage renewal. Get mortgage intelligence working for you. When we were selling our house, we were looking for a certain amount um, and Jay came to me and said, but don't worry about it. If I'm not able to sell your house, I'll buy it for cash. You will have no problems moving into your new house. And eventually when the buyers came in and they were a little bit short, Jay um, offered to pay out of his pocket and honored what he had promised to us and actually um, he made it happen. The Bridge Team, where honesty and integrity makes a vital difference. Welcome back to Let's Talk Money with Natasha. Again, I'm here with Jay Bridgepaul, and we're going to continue our very highly educated conversation here today about real estate and uh, the market and what you have to look out as viewers in terms of getting, op getting into opportunities and also learning a little bit about the market in sense, as Jay mentioned, in terms of average pricing and, and uh, resale. So, Jay, you were mentioning uh, before, right before the commercial that, uh, you know, Milton and, and, and certain areas are, are really booming um, that are outside the GTA. Would you like to comment on some further um, areas, too, that you're, you're, you're specializing in? Uh, yes. The, the, in terms of real estate for investors especially, it's good to buy properties in mature area that have big lots, for example, an older bungalow in a big neighborhood, chances are what will happen in about five to 10 years, people don't want to build their new home farther out. Mm -hmm. So they will break that home and put a nice home there. The minute they do that, for example, in like in South Etobicoke, the entire area value just move up. It become ascending. The bigger property, pull the value up. So for investors, focus on huge lots, mature area. For example, in Brampton, around Bramley City Center, around the Shoppers World. There are great corridors for investment at this point. 
Awesome. And you, when you say investments, are you speaking about maybe an investor buying and holding as a rental or buying and, and, and renovating or doing a new build? What, um, what? I'm saying buy, hold. I always believe buy, hold, and profit. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been investing in real estate for 25 years, and the same thing I see. Mm -hmm. When people buy and hold, the value goes up. They can take that money, put it in other ones. Now, look at it this way. It's probably your best retirement strategy best in RRSP. If in your lifetime you can have four properties, just residential properties, paid for, and each give you $2,000 per month, that's a $96,000 every year guaranteed income. It's like investing $1.5 million in a GIC. Yes, but with the additional security of brick and mortar, right? Real yeah, estate, right? Yeah, definitely. That's that's actually a good way of looking at it. Let's just go back in terms of you know, the, you know Ontario itself um, and the real estate market. I want to talk a little bit more about first-time home buyers because in our Indo-Canadian uh, Caribbean, there's a lot of young people that are married, getting married. Uh, you know, they're they're looking into their first home ownership, and you and I both know that's the most expensive investment any Canadian can make is buying a home. Yes. Um, so, what, why don't you educate our viewers a little bit about your strategy when you meet a first time, when you meet a first-time potential home buyer, what you will do to ease their their nerves in terms of getting into <laughs> the biggest investment? Uh, well, the first thing we need to do is number one I will sit with them on a one-to-one -one basis mm -hmm. and be able to give them some guidance we want to take them from renting and walk them through the entire process until they move into their property so the first thing we'll do we explain behind the curtain ways how the bank qualify them based on that how much they're qualified we'll then shop around see what's within their price range as a first-time buyer Natasha I always advise my clients to make sure they buy what they can afford to pay for. Don't get carried away and get into something that you cannot pay for. So first time buyer, you're looking at focusing, building more wealth. Once you buy your property, I advise them, don't pump too much money into renovating the property and making it exceptionally nice. The reason, the reason for it, take that money, throw it in your mortgage. It's a better way on a long term. That's their first home. So let me stop you right there. You, yeah. you made a good point where be careful in pumping in money into the home where you got to do some renovating. But what happens when, um, there, you know, Toronto's old. There's certain pockets in Toronto that's considered old Toronto, and there's a lot of opportunities, mature neighborhoods, good schooling and stuff. And some of these homes, you know, you can buy them, but they, little, they need a little bit of TLC, you know, a little bit of a lipstick, yes, some cosmetic yes, yes, upgrades. Yes. Um, if you have a client, you know, that's willing to, you know, do that, it, what, what would you suggest? If they got the money, then it's okay. But as a first-time buyer, they're, you know, why all you just put all your money down as a down payment? Okay. And then suddenly you're going to take credit cards to do all these upgrades and then you're caught behind the eight ball where you know you're always behind in your payment okay uh, well also you know running a mortgage broker team if I can comment on that Jay there is something now that the uh, CMHC and Genworth some of our insurers are doing it's called the purchase plus improvements mm -hmm, I don't mm -hmm. know if you're aware, yes, of, that. aware of that yeah yes. where so if there's a, a little bit mm -hmm. of a capital work to be done which is a you, maybe if you want to you want to upgrade the kitchen or, or upgrade the roof or, or the furnace, you can actually, you know, get the more, uh, get a mortgage that will, you know, include or capitalize in those expenses. Um, is, would you suggest that? Uh, yes, I'll suggest that. The point I'm trying to make is that don't go spend all your money on upgrades and get carried away and get a big bill. You, you may need to upgrade to live. Do what you need to do, but keep it minimal. If you got a choice within finishing your basement versus putting a modern kitchen, Finish the base basement because value is a function of what you get out of the home, not what you put into it. Okay. The finished basement will carry more value. Well said. Uh, so let's let's wrap this up. Um, we're gonna, we're going to be having our, another guest soon, and I, I want to just get, why don't we give our viewers three three most positive things in, in buying a resale home, and th and three. Uh, uh, things that you, they must look out for as first-time home buyers. As a first-time home buyer, if you're buying a resale home, number one, make sure that you choose the right neighborhood because where the schools are, stay away from apartment buildings, mm -hmm. etc. It will bring your value down. Okay. So make sure location is good. Number two, I always advise them buy the biggest home in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. 
that probably needs some upgrade mm -hmm. than buying a smaller home that is upgrade. You see, you can always upgrade a bigger home, but you can never extend a smaller home. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult for you to do that. Awesome. So, you know, I tell them here, buy the bigger home. If the price is equivalent, upgrade it, you get a better quality. Okay, so location, size, size, and then amenities. And then amenities. So wow. That's a tree. Awesome. Well, yes. thank you, uh, Jay, for coming out here today as my guest. I'm very honored to have you here sitting beside me, and I hope you today, viewers, learned a lot, and uh, hope to see you soon. Thank you. This is Poppy, and this is her friend Matt. Poppy and Matt are happy entrepreneurs. Poppy's business is booming, and she now wants to buy her first home. Matt's bistro is also doing very well. He's got his eye on a condo around the corner. Poppy and Matt each head off to their bank. Unfortunately, they both hit what we like to call the self-employed mortgage wall. Poppy and Matt realize they need some professional advice, so they go to their friendly neighborhood mortgage intelligence broker. Turns out, there's a way around their mortgage wall. Their brokers give them five important tips. Use tax returns, notices of assessment, and financial statements to demonstrate your earnings. Document your assets, liabilities, and expenses. Your lender wants to understand your business. A professional online presence helps. Have a good credit rating. The bigger the down payment, the better. And use a mortgage broker. A broker has access to lenders that specialize in self-employed mortgages and can anticipate the challenges you might face. Poppy and Matt were impressed. They're used to working with professionals, so it makes sense to do the same with their mortgage. And now they're happy homeowners. Don't hit the self-employed mortgage wall. Get mortgage intelligence working for you. Welcome back to Let's Talk Money with Natasha, where it's all about where we're educating you how to earn, save, and make money. My second guest here today, part two of our show, I would like to welcome a very good friend of mine, also um, one of Ontario's top REMAX agent in the West Indian community, Haro Shivratran. How are you, Haro? Very good, Natasha. Good, good. Thank you for coming out today. It's my pleasure. And uh, we're going to actually take over a little bit more on a different approach on educating our viewers today, Haro, a little bit about being a repeat home buyer. Um, and also investment opportunities in Ontario. But before we do that, Haro, I'm going to ask you to maybe um, educate our viewers today on, on your thought process in terms of real estate being a sound investment for us. Well, Natasha, I must say yes, that real estate is a very, very sound investment. For example, the biggest advantage of real estate investing is that most people put a down payment down. For example, you can buy today with 5%. So if you're buying a home for $400,000, you're going to put down 5%, which is about $20,000. And the appreciation you get is on the purchase price, not on the investment of $20,000. So for example, if you get 5%, it will be 5% of $400,000. So your appreciation even the minimal appreciation that we had over the years is 5%. So you will get about 20% $20,000 appreciation yearly. And that is a very powerful type of investment that you can leverage at later down the road and build a lot of wealth just by owning your own home. So if I'm doing my math, uh, just correct me if I'm wrong. If I'm doing my math, you buy something today that's worth $400,000 and in 20 years, you're almost doubling your investment. That's right. And, uh, and not only the investment of appreciation, your mortgage actually comes down to. So you got, you got free and clear equity. Um, you also have the increased value in your home. It's a win-win situation for, for a homeowner. Definitely. And the system in Canada allows you that your principal resident is 100% tax-free. That's pretty good. So you're saying I can actually buy my house today for $400,000, 20 years from now, sell it for $800,000 and walk away with that profit tax-free? Definitely. And that, that is That sounds a, really good. That is the break the Canadian government gives homeowners, that investing in your own home, and those are the, the benefits of buying your own home. That's, that's good to know. Thank you. So let's, since we're on, uh, on the point of making money and talking about making money in a wonderful market in real estate, let's talk about investment opportunities. You know, a lot of Canadians are now looking to park their money in, in safe haven products such as, you know, gold and real estate instead of the stock, stock market and mutual funds and so forth. Why don't you maybe educate me and our viewers about a little bit about investments and if, if you were to take a, a, a client, how you would walk them through in terms of an investment opportunity? Well, thank you for that. Many clients 
does not understand the simple system of investing. It's not a very complicated system. For example, most homeowners today had bought a home five, 10 years ago, have almost paid off or 90% equity. So Haro, why don't you educate our viewers here today um, and give them a guidance in terms of, you know, if they want to buy an, a, an investment property and they're already a homeowner, what are some avenues or, or ways you would, you know, services you would provide for them? I'll tell you, Natasha, it's a very simple system. Most homeowner purchase a home five, 10 years have built up tremendous equity. They can use that equity today to leverage it, to purchase a second home. And that can give you potential income. And it's very simple today that most homeowner doesn't realize that the amount of equity they've built up in the last five years because the appreciation of homes have went up so much that to take advantage of that equity you built is a good opportunity today to buy a second home. So not only the value of the home has gone up, is it fair to say that their, their principal has gone down because they've been paying their mortgage payment too as well? So they're, they're double ending, you know, equity increase. Is, is that fair to say? Yes, and I, as a realtor as well, I've been heavily invested in real estate and I've done a lot of properties for myself and I can guide them through the process. It's not very complicated. It's buy, hold and prosper. Buy, hold, and prosper. I actually like that. For pretty good saying. So let's go back a little bit in terms of in, in investment. Um, so a first-time investor in real estate will typically buy what type of, of, of investment? A lot has to do with your comfort level. A lot of people are comfortable to buy a fixer-upper because maybe they know how to do things. Some people are more comfortable buying a home that they just rented right off from the day they purchase it. So turnkey Yes, rental. so it, it depends on your comfort level and mm -hmm. that's where I can help. I will sit with the client and see their needs, their requirement, their risk tolerance, and then I can be able to put them in that type of investment. Sounds good. Well, we'll be right back. Stay tuned for more of Haro. This is Eric, and this is Maine. They both can't wait to buy their first home. They heard it's a smart idea to get a mortgage pre-approval. Eric went to his bank to determine what he could afford but didn't get a lot of information about the mortgage process and what his pre-approval really means. Mean called her friendly neighborhood mortgage intelligence broker to get her pre-approval and some helpful advice. Eric and Mean both found perfect homes with the help of their realtors. They each made an offer and both were accepted, but Eric was in for quite the surprise. Turns out his bank's pre-approval was what we call a non-pre-approval. It was only a rate guarantee with conditions. <clears throat> Eric still had to confirm his down payment and income. And when he did, he didn't qualify for his mortgage. Luckily for Eric, out of dozens of lenders and hundreds of options, a mortgage intelligence broker was able to help him out of a tight spot and find a mortgage that suits him perfectly. Eric and Mean are now both happy homeowners. Beware of the non-pre-approval. Get mortgage intelligence working for you. Do you know what these four homes have in common? They all sold within one week for more than 99% the asking price. Thanks to one unique real estate broker, Harrow Shiverton from Remax Realty. Do you know why buyers call Harrow Shiverton? Because they know Harrow will find them their dream home and use his negotiation skills to get the best price possible. Before you buy or sell your home, call an experienced broker, Harrow Shiverton from Remax Realty at 647-688-4276. Welcome back to Let's Talk Money with Natasha, where it's all about educating you how to earn, save, and make money. We're back here with Haro. And Haro, I want to actually touch a little bit about um, repeat home buyers. Um, home buyers that are looking to, we're going to talk about the ones that are looking to upgrade. Um, you know, families that are already established with a little bit of, you know, children are a little bit older. They're, they're maybe in, their, in high school or post-secondary, and they're looking to upgrade in terms of a bigger home. What are your thought process in terms of, you know, what would you tell a home viewer, the things that they would need to do in getting their home prepared for sale and then buying maybe another home? Well, Natasha, that, that is an excellent question. I think that um, over time, we need to upgrade our home like anything else. For example, if we had bought a town home and we had paid 200000 and probably worth 300, 350, I don't see that town home going to a million, million and a half. But by selling that home, buying another home, maybe for six, 700000 even if you'd never invested in any other real estate and you invested in that one home, by upgrading that home over the years, you can actually build a home that's very 
valuable at the time of retirement. So for example, if you sold that town home and bought another one for 600 and you sold that for three, that six can go to a million. Whereas that town home may not go to a million and your needs change. A lot of times you might need more bathrooms, you might need more garage. So by upgrading, it's not only getting a bigger home, you're getting a lot more features as well. That's actually a good point. You know, you and Jay were, you, you, you guys are talking about seven digit values, million dollars, 1.5 million. Is this, would, would this be safe for me to say that you find that, the, 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 when I mean the suburbs outside of, outside of GTA, I'm talking about Georgetown, maybe Milton, um, Cambridge, Guelph, uh, the Durham region would be, do you see homes in the next five, 10 years reaching, you know, um, the, 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 the low 1 million? I would say that, I lived and work a lot in Brampton, and I've seen homes in the last five years have almost doubled in value in Brampton. Wow. So it's not unlikely it will happen in the suburbs because that's where it feeds from the GTA. The suburbs take the overload from the GTA because in the GTA, in Toronto especially, homes is average a million dollars. So a lot of people might not be able to afford a million dollars today, but they can go out of the GTA, like the surroundings and maybe buy a nice home for about $700,000. And buy and hold, right? Yes. That's good. So Hara, why don't you explain to our viewers a little bit about some of the um, protection that they need from a real estate agent like yourself in terms of when they make that agreement of purchase and sale to buy another home or when they are actually selling their home and they're accepting an offer, some of the conditions that you would make sure that's, that it's there for them to protect their investment, whether it's a, whether it's a sale or a purchase. Thank you, Natasha. Most person buying a home may be the largest investment they'd ever make. And it is very important that they choose a realtor. The reason why is that realtor have knowledge of knowing what conditions to be in there, what to look for. For example, if there's an airport there, there's a fire hydrant, we'll point these things out. And when you're buying a home, you don't pay any real estate fees. So there's no reason why you shouldn't have very good service at no charge to you. So buying, definitely you should use a realtor because why do you own surgery? Why should you take the chance to, to buy your biggest investment and not use somebody very experienced? So I want to ask you really a really uh, mind-boggling question that, that's, that I maybe have a, uh, sometimes have difficulty in, in, in understanding myself. You know, you hear it, you see it, everybody's talking about it. You know, the GTA is such a hot market. And if you don't go in firm in an offer, you know, there's multiple biddings, there's, there's over purchasing prices. Um, how, how, do you, um, how do you make your client comfortable in knowing that they can still get their dream home and not lose that opportunity in a multiple bidding situation? With the hot real estate market we have right now, we do have multiple offers and bidding. But that doesn't mean that you should be suicidal of what you're doing. You should not going firm, in, especially in Toronto, there's a lot of older homes that might have many issues. And by going firm and not having the home inspected, you could be suicidal to yourself. Wow, so, that's actually pretty interesting. So uh, what are some of these major concerns going in firm? I know, so you're saying I can buy a home and I can go in firm and then after I move in, it could be a nightmare. Well, yeah, and not only going in, going in firm is not one of the things I would advise my client to do. Because not only that today when you pre-qualify for a mortgage, the bank or the financing company still have to qualify the home. So sometimes you might feel you're qualified for 350 mortgage or 400,000, and the bank look at it and says, no, I don't think the home is worth that money. That's correct. That's absolutely correct. Being in the mortgage and investment industry, I, I know that pre-approvals are just the purchase price of a home, not necessarily the home um, itself. That's very interesting. So um, in closing, let's, let's uh, we're almost done our show. We're, we're ha we have a few minutes left. I wanna just, maybe you can tell our viewers today a little bit about um, you know the advantages of using a real estate agent and why they should not try to attempt to sell their house by themselves. Cause that's a new thing that's coming up now. People are trying to sell their house to avoid closing costs and commission and all kinds of stuff. Why don't you tell me why it's still good to stick to a sound, qualified subject matter expert like yourself? Thank you, Natasha. Well, as I said before, buying a home, you don't pay any realtor fees. So there's no reason why you shouldn't use a realtor mm -hmm. to buy a home. 
and also they would negotiate for you, make sure that they cover you with everything from home inspection to mortgage to lawyers, mm -hmm. making sure that you're, you're well taken care of. And selling a home, a lot of times people feel that selling it with the, the realtor with the lowest commission or somebody almost zero commission is the way to go. But I've seen over my career that sometimes when you choose a realtor based on commission and not looking at the end result, because when you hire a realtor, you do not see the result. You only see what you're signing for, for example, your commission and your listing price. Mm -hmm. And that is only for marketing. The actual price you get for your home is when you get an agreement of purchase and sale, and then you look at how the realtor have negotiated that price. And a lot of times when you use an experienced realtor, he will renegotiate that offer and get you much more than you expect. And paying a small commission is, is a small price to pay. That's actually well said. And don't forget, using a professional real estate broker or agent, they have the opportunity in, in, in investing in your home through marketing um, and exposure. You have maximum exposure through the MLS system and also with your contacts and your affiliated brokerages and other agents too as well. So that's something to take, to take into consideration. Um, I would like to thank you to coming on here today. And I hope uh, you viewers learned a lot about real estate. I know I did. Um, Jay and uh, Haro's information will be throughout be displayed throughout the show and please feel free to contact them um, and uh, get the right advice you need um, and have an awesome awesome day and remember um, tune in next time to Natasha with let's talk money where we're going to educate you on how to earn save and make money take care and have a good one